Okay, welcome everybody. Here, I'll turn this music down. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and we are going to be making a painting together today. We are going to be making a painting by one of my favorite artists, and I'm certainly not alone. She's one of the most popular, well-known artists of all time, Frida Kahlo. And she is... Uh, both an uh, incredible artist and also personality who changed the world in many ways besides just her art itself. And her art is, most of her paintings are actually probably a little bit too complicated for us to do in a short two hour period of time. But I did find one that I think we can do. It's going to be a bit, of a, a bit of a race, but I think we can do it. So... Let's get right on to it. This is the painting that I want to paint. This is uh, Frida Kahlo's Still Life with Parrot and Fruit from 1951. And I think she died just a few years after having painted this. So this is kind of towards the end of her life while she was confined to a wheelchair and then later on just to her bed. So... Uh, which is another really inspiring thing is that she was this person who just like really could not be restrained creatively no matter what condition her body was in so I think it's amazing that she painted this painting at all let alone she did it from her hospital bed so she ended up spending the last two years of her life confined to her bed and and kind of with there's some images of her painting in her bed and maybe we'll see those in a couple of seconds in fact Let's take a quick little um, detour here. Here's some just information. Yeah, so she died in 1954 at the age of 47 years old. She got into a uh, car accident. She was hit by a car. Um, let's see some of her artwork. Well, we'll take a look at some of her paintings. What was I going to look at? See if there's one of her in her, her bed. No. There's an amazing, there's two great studios you can visit of hers down in Mexico City where my wife and I went on our honeymoon. And there's the Casa Azul, which is kind of probably the most famous one. It's this big, bright blue uh, um, house with beautiful gardens inside. And um, there's lots of her art on display there and huge lineups to get into. And by the way, if you ever go there, reserve your tickets online. You can you can sort of not go right to the front of the line, but there's sort of two separate lines. Um, here's an image of her wheelchair uh, next to her paintings. So she had assistants wheel her up to her paintings. Um, is there not one of her in her hospital bed? Uh, so here's just some photos of her. Um, let's just see. So here's some images of her in her hospital bed painting away. Um, maybe one of the, maybe the today's painting is in one of these photos of her working her way in her hospital bed or in her bed. I think this, you can see the, this bed is still on display there. And from above that there are, there's things that can hook on to the, the, the top part of the bed so that things can hang down so she can paint while she was in bed there. Um, but let's take a look at just at some of her paintings. One thing you'll notice about her paintings is that she's featured in a lot of her own artwork. Now, some of this is a little confusing because there's people who've made paintings of her and some of them are photographs. So obviously Google Images isn't the most ideal place to look at images. But it gives you an idea that a lot of her artwork uh, involved her own body, whether it's her face or her hands or her feet, and also depicting herself f like flying through the air or combined with other animals. There's a very famous one of her as a deer. Run here it is, kind of running through uh, the forest with arrows in it. And so she used her art to communicate very personal ideas. There's a strong autobiographical element to her artwork and all sorts of little symbols and shapes in there that represent things important to her. And 
Um, beyond the fact that I think she's a really interesting, great artist, I think her art is really inspiring for uh, for anyone in that she really focused her her artistic energy inside. And she was a part of the surrealist art movement, and the surrealists were all about investigating their dreams and their thoughts and using processes called like automatic writing, which is just writing and painting as quickly as possible before you can edit or change what you're about to say to kind of create um, these surprise moments. And, and they were, you know, this is all around the same time as Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung and advancements into like psychology and kind of trying to dig into the unconscious and, and to pull out the, the good and the bad that might be residing inside of our heads. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about her artwork as we paint it. And here's the paint. Whoop. There's the painting we're going to make. I'm going to get out my supplies. I've already got some water, just some regular uh, lukewarm tap water. We are going to use... I think we'll be able to use most of our paints today, just looking at the painting. We'll probably put a little bit of gray in here. So we'll need a little bit of black. Got a canvas. And... Okay. So let's begin... Uh, oh, I need my... my palette here and I'll put those on when we get the paint. Okay, so let's grab a pencil and we're gonna sketch this one out. Now, I've got a very rectangular canvas and let's just get this painting. This painting is square, right? So, oops. So, we're going to simplify this a little bit just so that we can get the whole thing done in this short couple of hours that we have together. So what I like to do is, oops, I've got the wrong view here. Let's back this up. Okay. So as always, what I like to do is divide my canvas in half and you know it's not even a straight line it's not even right in the middle but that's okay just to help locate the middle which in this case I think is probably somewhere right at the top of this orange so I'm gonna put this orange right here um, and then I think this is a pomegranate Think. Could be something else, but I've got a pomegranate. Um, you know, I'm going to draw this watermelon in here, and you see, I'm just going to expand the picture just a little bit. So it's kind of like a half moon. Um, let's draw some more. Because this is an underdrawing, I can draw right through these shapes fearlessly without being worried that they're going to cross over anything. Or, you know, that because I'm going to paint over all of this shortly, right? Okay. Let's see, we've got in something else here. Maybe once I draw it out, I'll take some things out, or when I start painting it, we'll see. a lot of these shapes but we can obviously change the colors as we go I'm maybe I'll just do quickly what this on this orange here looks like it's been sliced open it's probably enough um, 
Here's the watermelon the rind. Okay, and then we got this parrot here. So I'm just going to start with kind of like a triangle for this parrot. And that kind of helps me get the, the angle of the back. All right, and then on the top of this triangle, I'm going to put a little circle. All right, and that's going to be, we'll do a dot for an eye. Um, okay, I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a quick little sketch. Uh, if I wanted, I could move things around and move make the bird more prominent, if you like. But I think I'm pretty happy with this as a sketch. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to apply some paint onto the surface uh, to get it sort of all uh, ready for painting. So maybe I'll um, let's. I'm going to go to this view here just for a second, and I'll move that to the side in case people are still using it to draw from. And while that's happening, I'm just going to apply these, my, my words on here. Okay, I've got my warm yellow and my cool yellow and my cool blue and where is it? Warm blue. Cool red. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is for this for this painting, I'm gonna apply um, a warm yellow on the most of the foreground. So I'll get that ready. I'm gonna, I might as well get all the paint out here on my palette. Maybe let's move that to the side. Um, some white right in the middle. I'm going to need more of it eventually, but sometimes when I use my white, it gets dirty really quick with a bunch of different colors. So rather than putting a big blob there and then it getting contaminated with one color, I'm just going to apply more as needed. And then black, I, I'm just going to put a little bit there because I won't need a lot of it. It goes a long way, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover most of the painting. Sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover most of the painting with the warm yellow. Uh, and then I'm going to put some cool yellow in the background. Or maybe cool blue. We had a, a bright warm blue. I think either way I'm going to put the cool colors in the, in the background, warm colors in the foreground. But one of the little changes that I'm going to make is I'm going to apply the warm yellow with without diluting it with any water. And what that's going to do is it's going to help that paint go into the little bumps on the surface of the canvas. So just as a quick little if we think of like a canvas from the side, 
you know, it's 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 made of fabric. It's literally a canvas stretched over this panel. And so if we're looking at it from the side, and this is the bottom, right? So if we're looking at it like this, right? That's kind of a, an exaggeration of what we see. So often when we're painting, what happens is we drag our paintbrush over this surface and then we get little paint blobs in here and cover the tops like this. And then when we're painting again, it keeps having to fill up these little gaps. And it can be a little bit frustrating to paint on a surface like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply more paint and try to fill up some of these gaps. And that's gonna make for a smoother painting surface. Now, um, I am gonna do a separate video talking about how to prep canvases, because it's a little bit more of an advanced thing that requires maybe a little bit of extra time. So I'm, I'll make a separate video about how to do that. And last um, class, some people were asking about it and I was saying you could prep your canvas with just by putting a lot of white on there and even potentially sanding it. But again, that's something I'll come back to later on. Okay, so here's my warm yellow, I'm getting it on my brush. No water, I haven't touched my water. It's still sitting here completely untouched, right? So, okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna brush it in to my picture here. So I can still see my pencil lines I'm just using it to fill in the weave of the canvas here. Now I probably don't want to, I don't want it to be too thick, otherwise it could take forever for this to dry and we want to try to get this painting done today. So you can see I used quite a, a lot of paint already. Um, and I think I may even paint this here, which is the, the, um, the watermelon. Wow, the word escaped me for a second there. I'll do that, I think, with... Uh, another color here in a second. So I'm even just putting a little bit more on where I feel like it's... Because, you know, when you're looking at it, you can see certain areas are thicker and thinner. So I'm just taking a look, like, where's the, the thinner places? And just going a little bit, adding a little extra paint into those areas. And I'm just going to get the edges of my painting... I just, I love, you know, I, I do this all the time, and it's just one of those things that I think is kind of neat to look at somebody's canvas, and let's say, because this is ultimately going to be all sorts of different colors, is that maybe a little bit of the yellow that I'm originally putting down still kind of shows through on those edges, and so when people are looking at it, they're like, oh, I thought this was green, but I see a little bit of yellow hiding there on the edge, and you're like, oh yeah, well that's, there's a, a couple of little steps involved in getting the paint into that point. Okay, so I've got yellow there. I'm also gonna paint, um, let's, because this is still kind of for its middle ground-ish, so I'm gonna paint this yellow, let's paint the bird yellow. Got lots of paint on my brush, so I'll just spread it out a little bit. So this is just going to make it so much easier to do a lot of this painting that we're going to do later on here. 
Okay. And I'm going to turn it around to see what else needs to be done. By kind of taking my brush and continually spreading it around like this, it's going to help that paint dry just a little bit faster. Okay. So while that's drying, I'm just going to take my brush and clean it off a bit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some warm red on the, uh, so I'm just going to clean my brush off a bit here. So I'm going to put some warm red right in here, but I'm going to add a little bit of white to it so that um, when I put my another coat of warm red on there, it's not too dark. So let's get some some white. Here's my warm red. And I'm going to paint Actually, let's go just paint the whole thing. We'll just You know, I, I, I should say again that this may or may not be exactly how Frida Kahlo made this painting. And at no time have I ever suggested any of these paintings were made, that I'm painting these paintings exactly like the way the artist did. These aren't um, like from a art history point of view painting exactly like that artist. There's There are videos that already exist like that where people really go into depth on how an artist made each painting. Um, that's not really the purpose of these episodes. This is really just about how for you to learn how to paint in general and using these artworks as inspiration. Okay, I mean I could have used this same kind of pink color for this pomegranate. In fact, if I got a little bit extra paint on here, let's just, let's do that, a little bit of that. The colors are going to mix a little bit. The more paint I got built up on here, the easier it's going to be to paint anything anyway. Okay. And also, often when I'm, when I'm doing this, I kind of go a little bit over the lines. Because if I want to hide some of those lines, ideally you would have drawn a little bit lighter than I did. So you probably you shouldn't have such a problem hiding your lines. Um, okay. So let's just take, where's my original image here again? Let's take a look at this here. Okay. So now let's do the background. I suspect she probably used a warm uh, yellow or kind of like an orangey color for the whole painting to get started. But since we've been using warm and cool colors and really kind of trying to use that system throughout, we're going to continue that today. So I'm going to put a warm yellow in the background. So I'm going to take, or sorry, a cool yellow. So I'm going to take, we use the warm, and we'll turn it this way. We use the warm yellow for most of the foreground here. So now I'm going to use the cool yellow for the background behind the, the parrot and the still life here. And I, I don't mind if I go over top of some of these things. It does not. This is the time for kind of playing around a little bit and you can kind of go quickly it's not you don't have to be too accurate while you're painting like this again I'm gonna make sure 
sure I get my, my edges. And also while I'm doing this, what the, how I'm doing this is I just take my brush and I'm kind of just on its side, kind of going like this or sometimes brushing up and down. You know, sometimes I'll get paint on the back side of the picture. So just make sure if you're doing this on your coffee table or something, you got some paper or newsprint or something that's going to protect your table from getting paint all over it. Okay, so because I'm painting with the with the paint straight out of the tube, no water, the paint is a little bit thicker, obviously, and it's going to take a little bit of extra time to dry. We're But it looks like it's going pretty quickly too. You know, on, on the same token, if you put too much water on it, it can actually make take make it longer to dry just because there's more it's it's more wet, right? Sometimes if you're painting directly out of the tube, there's less water in there, so it can actually dry a little bit faster. Looks like it's going pretty good. So some of this area is already dry. You can see when I move it up and down, the, the areas that are really shiny are still really wet. So you can see this area right there, still very shiny. You can see the watermelon is almost totally dry. Just that little spot is still a little bit wet. Okay. So, um, Good time to take a sip of your tea and take a quick look at the comments. Um, people are excited to paint today. Good to hear. There's Palash. Hi, Palash. And Sue, she's excited to paint. Gail, I love this painting too. Vanya, hi. Shelly McCool, hello. Looking forward again to a wonderful painting night. Yes, me too. I love it that all the, that I get to spend time with all of you guys and we get to paint in real time together. I just think that's the, the neatest thing. And then, you know, hundreds of people afterwards are painting along and sending me images. I think what I want to do is in, the, in a couple of episodes, I want to do a special episode. Probably won't be on our regular night, but just an episode where I spend a little bit more time looking at each one of your paintings and talking about them. So, and so it'll just be a class devoted purely to looking at the artwork you guys have sent, and maybe we'll look at mine and we can talk about that. Uh, just because I feel like when I'm look, looking at all of these artworks, I'm going really, really fast. And I don't really have a time to kind of to look at them and, and give them the, the time that they need. So I think I'm going to make a special episode where we look at your artwork. Um, May says, hi, everybody. Terry says, good evening. All painting has now become my passion. That's great. Painting is your passion now. That makes me so happy, Terry. I love I love to hear that. Avani says, yes, I've been to the Freedom Museum. Uh, I lived in Mexico for 23 years. Wow, you're really lucky. I, My wife and I had the most amazing time in Mexico. I highly recommend Mexico to anybody. Uh, what a beautiful country and people. We, we, we went to Mexico City and um, uh, went to all the museums, which are amazing, beautiful, like uh, just um, very, very different than what you might hear on the news or in um, it's uh, it's certainly there's certainly probably dangerous places of Mexico City, just as there's dangerous places here in Vancouver or New York. Um, but there's also places in Mexico, Mexico City particularly, that are you know, that are probably the, the richest, wealthiest places where walking around, I felt like really out of place. I felt like I need a Ferrari to fit in here. 
Um, and uh, Deborah says hi from Almir, Quebec. Jean says hi, Jackie. It would be great to see the original on screen too, if possible. Um, not sure if we're talking about the, this painting. Maybe it was while I was making the putting the paint down. Um, okay, and uh, okay. So I think this painting looks like it's probably dry enough for us to start doing some painting onto, and we'll kind of start painting on the areas that I began first, so they have a little bit of time to dry. You know, even even looking at this, and I just realized, you know, this is where my orange is going to be, and I painted the little bit of, of this color over top of it. It's not really going to make so much of a difference, because I'm going to paint over top of everything anyway. Okay, so how about, uh, let's use, let's mix some um, orange. And we'll put some orange in the orange places. And then we'll mix some reds, and then some purples, and some greens. Parrot, and, uh, okay. So, let me see. I'm gonna get, um, for this, I'm gonna start out with maybe a little bit larger brush. I'm just sort of testing how that's going to work. So I'm going to use a little bit of a larger brush to mix. And we are going to mix that orange first. I need a little bit more of my warm yellow paint since I used so much of it to start out with. So I'm going to take my warm yellow and a little bit of warm red mix these together and I go wow that's pretty red too red right rather than mixing all of this in and making one gigantic mixture I'm just gonna move it off to the side here and that way I don't have to use so much paint to lighten it up now let's see if how things look if I paint on here uh, looks it looks okay, maybe a little bit too reddish. So I'm just going to go back in here, and this time I'm just going to grab some yellow paint right onto my brush, and I can mix it directly into the paint I already have on here. And that kind of gives it a neat effect as well. So I'm going to do that one. I've got oh, so this paint that was hiding up inside my, my brush here. Put some more yellow on there. So I'm just applying a few where there's the same color in a few different places here. And where there's this one here as well. Okay. Now, while this is still wet, what we're going to do is we're going to add some other paint to it to modify it, to give it some value, to give it a little bit more depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by adding a little bit more red to my brush. And then I'm going to put that into some of these areas, the shadowy areas. brush here. So it's much easier to do this when the paint is still a little bit wet. Because I can blend it in a little bit easier. 
Oops, this went right over here, so I'm just going to paint that. Okay. So I've got that. Now I'm going to just take... I've got this color. I'm going to add a little bit of warm blue, right? Just a tiny little tad. And I'm going to mix it into this mixture here, a little bit of that warm blue. A little bit of red again. And by doing this, I'm creating a brown. So brown is just orange with a little bit of blue, right? Brown with a little, or orange with a little blue is going to get me some brown. And then I can take this and kind of put this into some of these darker areas. Don't worry so much about making the painting exactly like Frida's painting. We want to be able to have some fun while we're painting rather than being so obsessed with making it perfect. And I'm going kind of quick. I, I totally understand if you need to pause or slow down you can to, to kind of get some of these details. You can see that Another thing that she's doing is there is a little, I think she was probably doing a bit of kind of stippling while she's painting, especially for these kind of oranges to get that effect. Um, I can keep on going more, a little bit darker as I go by just adding a little bit more blue to my mixture here. If I'm doing this and my color starts getting more and more green, that means that I'm just mixing these two colors and I need just a little bit more red in here just to make it more brown again so it's not going too greenish. I'm just going to do a little bit more of this. It gets a little bit tricky when the paint starts to dry. It kind of starts to... Um, it's almost like you're cleaning part of the paint off of the brush or off of the painting that's already there as you try to apply more paint to it. So often it's best just to kind of let it, let it dry and then come back to it later on. So it looks like I'm at that point right here. Okay. Um, in fact, we can even get a little bit of the same color in here. I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit with a little bit more yellow. Since I'm going to paint some of this white later on, I'm just going to leave a little little gaps. Okay. Boom. There. I can always touch anything up a little bit later on if I'm not happy with it. So, but this is a good start. Okay. So I'm going to clean my brush, get this paint off, because I'm going to move on to the red next. So make 
sure the camera here doesn't overheat. Okay. Um, okay. So let's look at the painting again here. So I'm going to paint some red down here. We'll get some red up here, then we're going to mix some purple into some of these other areas here. Um, okay, so with this here, what? Um, let's. We're just going to use some warm red, and let's just see what this color looks like on here. Wow, that's pretty intense, pretty intense color. So I'm actually gonna cut it down with just a little bit of, I'm gonna make it a little bit more orangey. So it's not quite so intensely red. And I'm going to make a little bit of green here. So I'm going to take my warm blue and my warm yellow. All right, I'm going to mix those together off to the side. And they're going to it's going to go a little bit brown just because I have some red still on my brush. You notice I haven't washed my brush or anything. I can take this. I'm just going to brush a little bit of green into this area here. And I'm just going to take a little bit more red and use this to blend some of this in here. So I've got this little bit darker color on my brush. And that I can use as a bit of a shadow. And I, I'm probably going to go back over a lot of this later on with some more paint. So right now, I'm just getting some of the, the basic kind of colors in place. And then I'm going to touch things up as I go here. So don't worry about like, oh, it's not perfect. I need to finish it before I move on. Don't worry about it. We'll get to everything in good time. Okay. Um, let's... I think I'm going to do actually a little bit of green since I got kind of a greenish color on my brush here. So I'm going to take some blue, mix this down here. And let's paint. So really what I'm trying to do is kind of get rid of any kind of the white space, or in this case, the yellow on the canvas. Kind of hide some of that. So I see these little areas kind of sticking through. I just take my brush and kind of, it's like I'm scrubbing paint into the weave of the canvas there. And same thing up in here. All right, I'm gonna take my green. And I've got a little bit of paint from before, some of that brown coming through, which I like because it just makes this going to make the painting look a little bit more complex. Okay. 
So we're slowly building up these different colors and surfaces, and we'll clean it all up towards the end. Um, oh, we got the parrot to do, so let's do a little bit of this parrot. Um, yeah, I'm going to still use this same color, the same green, warm green. Let's paint it in here. Now I know this is not the ultimate color that this bird is going to be. So I'm, again, I'm not worried about mixing that color in. In fact, it kind of looks like a little bit of a green cast, or, or kind of a like a really dirty green, brown color that's in there. That's all right. Okay. I think now we'll do what color. Maybe down here. I'm gonna put a little bit more. Warm yellow. All right, so you have to, you know, when you're at, when you're looking at the painting at this stage, you may be like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't look very good, Michael. It's we're still kind of early in the in the stages of this painting, so here. What I'm mixing is I just took some warm yellow and warm red. I'm actually going to take a little bit of yellow, or sorry, white. And this can just help make this a little bit more of a peachy color. A little bit too much. So just add a little more yellow back in there. And gonna add some more red in here well, I got a little bit of this color on my brush I'm just gonna put a little bit of this white in here the pomegranate Um, oh, and then there's this guy up here. We're going to do that, too. I forgot about that one. So just the same color that I had here, kind of peachy color. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some purple, and I'll put some purple into a few different places. Or that looks like a bit of a, a dark green avocado-like thing, right? So I'm just going to take, clean up my brush a bit here. Okay, to make a purple, what I'm going to do is take the cool red and the warm blue. Cool red, that's my magenta, and my warm blue. I'll mix this together. Make a beautiful color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it just because if I paint 
purple back over top of it, it might have a hard time showing through. So let's take a look at this here. Or it just might be too dark. So a little bit of white is going to keep the painting kind of a little bit bright underneath. that here as well. So you can see I'm, I'm just laying colors in pretty quickly. I'm not really obsessing about like sh trying to do any shading. I mean I did a little bit down here but that's just kind of while I had the paint on my brush I could kind of darken it a little bit so I did that. But uh, being pretty, pretty rough with how I'm just blocking things in. And this avocado I'm gonna make this a bit of a, um, a brown as well and to do that I'm just gonna add a little bit of warm yellow in here a little bit of warm yellow into my brown or into my purple and then here I've got it's kind of going pretty dark grayish kind of color Add a little more blue and a little bit of more warm yellow in here. So it's a it's a green that began from a purple. It's got a little bit of a darker quality. So, I think all of the elements are here in place. Uh, now I'm going to paint a little bit of the... In fact, while I've got this color, this is a great color that I can use for a bit of the of the watermelon, for the outside edge of the watermelon. What I'm doing is just adding maybe a little bit more blue in here, a little bit more yellow, just as my brush is getting pretty dry. Just got this really dark avocado green. And let's paint it on the bottom edge here. I've got that. There's all these little, uh, what do they call these parts of the fruit? Where are they? The, um, where when you pick the fruit, what do they call that? You know, the, it's where the stem went. I'm sure there's a few gardeners watching who know the answer to that. So I'll just put a few of these little I'm just almost at this point just a bit of a placeholder for where they're going to I'm going to put go a little more detail later on Oranges. 
Ages. Uh, Susan says, I love how the color layers roughly built and then voila, the perspective and shadows come together. I'm not trying to get too precious about it from the start and it's quite liberating. Yeah, when you, when you kind of start this way, you're just sort of building, putting paint into place and then we start to kind of refine it. And I think one of the things that um, painters, when they first start, is they figure, okay, what I'm going to do I'm going to paint, you know, one thing like this orange and I'm going to get the orange perfect. And then I'm going to move on to the other orange and I'm going to make that perfect. And then this and that and that and that. And what ends up, what ends up happening is first of all, it takes a long time to get the painting done uh, because you're working on one little area at a time. And since you're mixing those colors over and over and over again, it's ideally you want to be using them over throughout the whole painting so you're not having to mix the same color over and over and over again so this was going to save you a bunch of time as well um, but it's also uh, I also kind of think of it like I can almost see those paintings when I see paintings where one part has been done and then another part's been done they feel um, like each part feels very isolated and I want the whole painting to kind of come together, interlock really tightly and to be believable. And if I, if I keep separating things too much, then there, it just, it doesn't, there's not the harmony that I want. Whereas if I'm working through the whole thing, like a Polaroid picture and everything's developing simultaneously, it also can feel more satisfying too. Cause the other thing that can happen is let's say I make this beautiful orange in the middle and then I flub up somewhere else, then it can feel really deflating. Because if you're like, oh man, I ruined my this amazing picture because this was done, but now... So, whereas if I everything's slowly building, then there's there's less of that, oh, one perf part's perfect and one part's not. Because ultimately, it's all going to be perfect, right? Okay. So, let's work on the watermelon here. I think we're making pretty good time. So this watermelon is going to be a little bit challenging and for the sake of simplicity, I might simplify this a little bit uh, and not put in as much detail into the watermelon. We'll see. I'll kind of simplify it and then if I've got time towards the end, I'll come back to it and work on it a little bit more. So we're going to use warm red. And we're going to paint warm red through most of it. I am going to cut it down a little bit with some white, just so it's not super fire engine red. Okay, so you can see there's some white on here, but it is, like, I've tinted it a little bit, but not too much. And I'm just going to paint this pretty much over top of the whole surface here. You know, you could see she did a kind of, a, it's pretty jagged in her picture. Um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a jagged quality, but I think I'm gonna keep mine pretty simple. I'm gonna worry about the seeds and stuff a little bit later on, if time permits. Oh, I forgot there's the the rind here, so I'll just give it a little bit of white space. I don't need to paint red in there. I'm going to paint white right over top of it shortly. Um, so right now, I think it's, it's the camera right now is, is I, I keep forgetting to set the white balance, but I, it's kind of adjusting to this and making this look a little bit more orangey than it actually is. This is quite bright red at the moment. 
Um, and that's part of the reason why I painted this pink first rather than using the oranges that I had before because otherwise this would look really orangey. There's not really a lot of orange in a watermelon, right? So I'm trying, I was trying to avoid that from happening. It, it, it looks a little bit orangey on the camera right now, but it's not really like that too much. Um, you know what? Maybe what I'm going to do, hmm, I'm just trying to think about, I'm going to hold off on, um, on painting some of these, the little holes and things that she's got on her watermelon. Well, you know what? Let's do a little bit of it. Let's do a little bit of it. So to do that, I'm going to take some white. I'm not a lot of it. I'm going to mix this into my red. I think I need a little more warm red. So taking this white, mixing it into the warm red just a little bit. A little bit more than I had there before. And... I need a little bit more. And I'm just kind of, I don't even know if you can see this at all, but I'm kind of just going to draw into the surface some of these kind of white shapes. I think you can kind of see it's pretty subtle, which is good. This could be a, a time-consuming part of this particular painting, so that's why I'm a I was a little bit leery about doing this, but I think we'll, we'll see what happens at the end here. I think we might be able to pull this off. And if not, then I can always just paint red right back on top of it, and no one would even know. So I painted this little bit of white on there. I'm just going to add a little bit more white to my mixture and kind of paint just brightening up some places. So I'm not going over all my lines, but just some of them here. And I might have to darken some of these a little bit later as well. Now that I'm doing this, I feel like I'm, I might need to make this a little bit more jagged up here. So I'm just building. I've got a little bit of white on my brush, so that kind of helps to change the shape of the watermelon a bit. Okay, I'm going to do it keep on going here. I've kind of committed myself a bit, so. Now I'm improvising a little bit on from her painting. So I'm not really, if, if people are like, well, he's, this doesn't, where, what's, where's that line? I don't really see that line in the original. That's because I'm not really painting directly from hers. I'm just sort of taking her idea of these little uh, these shapes where the seeds are and kind of just riffing off them a little bit. And each time I'm adding a little bit more and more white into my mixture. And by kind of slowly adding more white in, I can get a little bit more of a subtle transition from one color to the other. So here's a few brush strokes which are a little bit more intense. You can dial them back with just a little bit of brushing them in a bit.
You know, if I was... If I... I could probably do a much better job if I was spending a little more time really looking carefully at how she painted some of, the, of this, but... Again, I'm in a bit of a time crunch, so I'm not gonna obsess too much over this. Right, well, always remember, we're doing this for fun, right? Um, so... If you're... If, some, if a part of this painting is driving you nuts, well, you don't have to... You don't have to, you know, torture yourself. If, you, if it's driving you too much, too, cr too crazy, you can always just say, you know what, I'm going to paint this red. Screw this. Let's move on. Let's, I'm not going to uh, waste too much of my mental energy trying to make this work. Okay, so I'm gonna now I got a little bit of let's paint kind of this the rind of or the, is it the rind the, the white part is the rind right or is that the green part? And so I'm because. There's some red on here, and even a little bit of red on my brush. I may need to go back and add a little bit more once that dries a little bit more white later on. I'm just going to take... She's got a little bit of, of white on her brush. Actually, I'm going to use a smaller brush. Just a much smaller brush. Just do a little bit... Of these last little highlights, and I've just got a little paint on my brush, so I can use that. I think I'll do more touch-ups on that as when I come back to it a little bit. But maybe while I'm right here, what I can do is do the orange here. Maybe while we're right here, I'll put a little bit of these little white spots on this. Uh, what fruit is this over here? Some kind of jackfruity thing. I don't know what this is. Little spikes on it. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna paint this. Oh, I got a lot of red on there. I don't want red on there, but I'm just going to paint a little bit of white on this beak. And I'm also going to get a little bit of white in that eye. You can see how the this white has kind of gone more and more pink as it dried, so that's okay. We'll let it kind of do its thing. Um, okay. I think 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint a little bit of the ground down here on the bottom, and then I'm going to paint the blue. Or maybe I'll paint a little bit of the... the we'll see. We'll, we'll do the ground first here. So I'm just cleaning my brushes as I go here because I don't want anything to dry out. As I mentioned before, sometimes I'll, I'll clean the clean them a little bit, not fully clean them during the session, and then afterwards I'll give them a nice deep clean. As I kind of keep them to the side so that they're um, uh, so I don't I don't just put them back with all the other paints here. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit again one of these larger brushes. Right, it's about the size of a fingernail kind of thing. We'll paint some of the stuff down here. Now it looks like a bit of a um, the same. It's a, it's it's like this warm yellow with a little bit of white in it. All right, so it's we're gonna use this paint. Let's let's mix it up in here because it's getting a little bit busy down there. I'm going to take this white and mix it together. Okay. I'm just going to start. I'm going to apply this pretty quickly. See, I got a little bit over top of one of the shapes, so if I'm quick enough, I can just use my finger to kind of brush it out of the way. Or off. So I'm painting this relatively quickly because I'm going to come back in a couple seconds and start adding a little bit of shading onto it. Or the shadows from the fruits I'm going to put on there. Okay, so now ideally what we would do is we would have a little bit of these colors in the shadow, right? So a little bit of red in the shadow, a little bit of orange, a little bit of purple, a little bit of green in here. I'm not sure we'll have time to get all of that done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same kind of uh, color that we had before, which was the purple. So I'm taking my blue and my red and kind of mix it together. I guess I can just do this right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of warm yellow into it. So basically I'm making it kind of a dark, dark color. And since there's some white on my brush, it's going to go kind of a little bit of a dark grayish kind of color. Right. So I mix it in here. We got kind of a gray. And then if I Mix it back, I'm kind of just making it not quite as dark as it as it was when I mixed it here. So I can take that and start putting it into these shadow areas. Now notice it's not I haven't gone super dark, right? It's kind of I'm starting kind of subtle. Because I'm gonna darken the darker areas as I go here. So it looks like the light is kind of coming from this side. This is the way that she's painted it.
Right, and if it gets a little bit dark, you can always lighten it up a little bit to kind of integrate it a bit better back into the background or onto the, the table here. Just to kind of diffuse that shadow a little bit. Let's make it a little bit darker now. Alright, so I got my same kind of... I'm just going to add a little bit onto my brush here. My brush is getting kind of dry. Which actually kind of fits pretty well with her style. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of this darker color right up next to these shapes. Use my finger a little bit to blend it a bit. In this instance, I could add just a little bit of water just to, if it's getting too sticky and you're having a little bit of trouble. Just wanna be careful that I could end up kind of cleaning the painting a little bit and taking some of the paint that was there off. But it will help kind of blend and integrate some of that color a little bit. Now, I'm not going to be able to do the, the best job imaginable in, in the time that we have, because I still got lots of the painting to do. But you can see how we could continue to build this up and get darker and darker and kind of really make this look pretty cool. Um, I could also take a little... Uh, is this, this, well, maybe I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later on if we got time. Um, I mean, since I still got a little bit of this paint mixed... I'm just going to continue a little bit more. One last little pass of a slightly darker paint, right? And this can look, at, you're like, wow, this doesn't look very dark here. But in comparison to the rest of the painting, it's getting darker and darker and darker. And it's that subtle little bit of the transition between light and dark that is most satisfying. All right, so if there's a little bit of areas or felt a little bit too blocky, I can get a little bit of water on my brush and then just sort of try to blend it out a bit. integrate it a little bit more. So let's do the bird up here. So to do the bird, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use make a cool green because I've got this quite warm color underneath. So even though I'm going to mix a cool green over top, it's not going to be so um, it's not going to be as cool. All right? It's going to kind of I still get the this nice kind of lemony color, but it just won't be as intensely lemony as it would be if I applied this 
the same paint directly onto the bare white canvas. So I've got some of this paint and I'm gonna, let's say I'm going to brush it over. Let's just put it over most of this, of the bird here. So in this instance, like, I don't mind if a little bit of that, you know, um, the original color is coming through in the weave. In fact, it kind of makes it look a little bit um, just more complex. And if somebody is to look at it, they're like, oh, how did you get that color? Like, how did you mix that? And you could say, well, it's actually, I didn't mix one color. There's multiple colors there. You know, I painted one color, a cool color, over top of a warmer color. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow on my brush and kind of get into this, the chest of the bird here. Just a little, kind of slowly, I take my time kind of building this up. Got a little bit of this slightly brighter green. You can see the more and more I paint, the more I'm filling up the weave of the canvas and the smoother and easier it is to paint. Let's now just, I'm going to take pretty much just some white or yellow right out of the tube and put this right on here and I'm going to blend it in just by kind of smudging it around a bit here. So what's happening is that that bright yellow, you know, it goes on my brush and then it's kind of blending with the paint that's already there. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of what we did before. With, I'm going to make a little bit of a darker color. So to make a kind of a darker color, I'm taking a warm blue and a cool blue. All right, got this nice dark color. I'm going to just cut it with a little bit of red. It's getting darker and darker and darker. So now i got this really dark color. Now I'm just going to put that brush down for a second and get my paint into the color I was just using. All right, so I got not a lot of that paint on there and I'm just going to mix a bit of that darker color that I mixed. Notice how I haven't actually used any black. I remember saying I, I have some on my palette, but I'm, uh, I haven't used it and I, you know, I might be able to get through this whole painting without it. month old daughter is having is her, the first time she's ever been sick is upstairs coughing sneezing and got a runny nose which is which is very sad and also extremely adorable <laughs> I hate to say it but it's just it's also pretty cute 
I don't know what she's doing up there, but it sounds like maybe she's losing her mind a little bit, a little delirious. Laughing and giggling away. <laughs> so what's nice about this is I've, I'm just used another color rather than black to make some of the shading. And then I'm just sort of brushing it in to integrate it with some of the other colors that are there. I know it's not exactly the, the same sort of look as she did, but we're gonna, you know, I wanna try to get the whole painting done in 30 minutes here. We're just gonna be a bit of a, it's gonna be tough. Um, okay, so you know what? While I've got this mixed, I'm going to take this same color, and I got my paintbrush is still kind of wet, so why don't I see what does this look like if I use this same color as seeds in my watermelon here. I think it looks great. So I'm going to put some of these seeds in here. Perfect. Right, so they look really, really nice and dark, but they're also not just black blobs there that are kind of just going to be this lifeless shape on the page. There's, there's, they're dark, but they've got life in them, which is what I want. I also want to be careful not to, to fill it completely up with seeds, and I want it, I don't want it to also look too even. I want it to be a little bit, a little bit uneven, so I have to think about where I want to put these here. Okay, while I'm right here, I am just going to add a little highlight to them. So I'm just mixing a little bit of white into that same color. I'll just brush a little bit. Okay. Um, while I've got a little bit of this paint on here, I'm just going to touch up a little bit, a few places where it might be needed. Should have done that eye while I had this dark paint. So I'm actually gonna, while I got that paint nice and mixed, I'm just gonna come back here and get the eye of the of the parrot. Well, it needs to be. Needs to be bigger, doesn't it? Okay. Making circles with a paintbrush is actually quite tricky. And um, what I'm doing is just kind of start trying to get a sharp point on here, my brush. Okay. How's that? Okay, much better. Okay, I'm running up against the time is slowly away or quickly ticking away here so I've got this in a little bit of a darker color I'm using it in a few different places just click on the 
fruit. You know, we have sometimes these little, I don't know what these things are, like the little kind of things that come off the side of these things, whatever they are, right? Um, Okay, let's do the let's do the background that big blue. That's going to change things dramatically really quickly. Uh, clean my brushes really quick here. You know, I haven't painted the beak or anything yet for, for a particular reason because I'm going to paint all this blue and I might have to do some extra work there. So I'm always trying to think of like how to save myself some time. Now, he used a, or sorry, she used a ultramarine blue, this really nice dark blue. And the reason why um, I painted the cool yellow down here is I want it to go backwards. I want to use... I want to use a warm color in the background, but if I just put the warm colors directly on the background, it's going to push forward, right? So I've actually put a cool color there first so that now when I put my warm color on top of it, it's going to recede a bit, right? So um, that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. So um, I've got my warm blue here get some on my brush might need a little bit more here we'll see and let's paint it into here now that looks a little bit a uh, little well actually you know what it's I think it's gonna be fine I was gonna say I thought it might look a little bit too dark but She might have put a little bit of white into her paint, I think, so. Which is what I was contemplating doing, and I can still do that again. You can see it's kind of mixing and going a little bit uh, green. So let's actually, let's put a little bit of white into this mixture. Not a lot, but I'm going to take my white. Let's see. I don't need a lot, like just a tiny bit, right? So here's my white. I'm going to take this. That might even be a little bit too much. Let's mix it in here. There we go. There we go. I mean, barely any white in there, but what a difference it makes for applying that paint, right? It's this incredible kind of chemical, uh, I don't know, if not a reaction, but it's just that white uh, changes the way that the blue and the yellow interact a little bit. Now I am using a big brush, so I can always take get a smaller brush. Oops, it looks like I'm going to be putting a watermelon seed right there. <laughs> That's what happens when you start going a little fast, as you drip a little bit of paint into the middle of your picture. But we'll make it work. No reason to get all worried about it. It can be pretty hard to to go around some of these tight edges, especially with a huge brush like I'm doing right here. Um, I am being a bit 
bit sloppy, moving a little bit quicker than I really should be doing. Which is why I made a little, I dropped some paint right in the middle of the picture. Alright. I'm going to let this dry for a bit before I come back to it because um, um, the more I start painting in here, the more I'm just kind of, I'm actually going to start stripping the paint off of the surface. So I'm going to let that dry. I'll come back and paint some more blue on it shortly. And this area here, let's uh, take care of my little mistake. So I'm just mixing a really dark color again. And take that on my brush. We're going to add another little watermelon seed. Maybe this is, that one just fell out of my mouth. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different color than I had there previously. A little bit too blue, so a little bit more red in there. And like the other ones, getting just a little bit of a highlight going. Okay. Um, so while I'm right here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some very light gray washes on some of these uh, fruits so that I can kind of darken them down just a little bit. So I've got my this dark color. I'll add a little bit of gray into it. Okay. And then I'm going to get some water on my brush, like I'm cleaning my brush. I'm just going to add more water to it. So I've got a pretty wet brush. Okay. And let's see. Let's go into some of the darker areas first. So if you're testing this, you want to kind of go into a darker area to test anything, right? Okay, and if I want to add, now I'm going to mix a little bit of color into these areas. So this was a green, so let's take um, that same color, warm blue and warm yellow. It's kind of green. And then paint most of this with that color. Blend it into this little bit darker color that I've got mixed here. Mm 
apply the same thing to some of the other orange parts of my canvas that I have. So I just dried my, or got my brush a little bit wet. There's not much paint on it, and that allows me just to kind of blend it in. So I'm like doing a little wash on top of this surface here. So right now I'm painting with a really, really super thin coat of paint. My paintbrush is, is, uh, has a, just a bare, small amount of paint on it. I have these darker colors. Alright, even that's still kind of too dark, so if I can even want, I can just take my brush and just kind of dry it off a little bit. Or kind of, it's almost like I'm cleaning it. And then I see, okay. I might pick up just a little bit more of that paint. And then I can take that. See how I'm just applying it. And it's gonna, as it dries, it might um, lighten back up a little bit. But this, this is, Kind of an oversimplification of uh, techniques that like Leonardo da Vinci would have used for to paint like the Mona Lisa for, for instance right is to being is these very very thin layers of paint and we can use this to build up surfaces let's go back to Applying this kind of light gray onto things to help darken things down a little bit. And as I go, add a little bit more. off a bit and then just brush this in. So it's like kind of like I'm it's this part for some people is fun for other people really annoying and slow and time consuming um, you know if you don't you don't have to use this technique to, to paint um, but this is you know just showing you one way of, that you can use to, to make your painting um, I'm just gonna get a little bit darker down in here here we've got this green I'm running out of time here hmm little avocado is driving me a little bit nuts. So I'm going to get a little bit white on here. Gotta get the highlight going on the front part. Thank you. 
So I'm being a bit lazy here and just using a different color from a different place to get that highlight. Burnish it in with my finger just a little bit. Um, okay. I think I'm going to try to do a bit of this down here. Let's get some of this darker paint. In. Ooh, that went a little bit too dark too quick. cleaned my brush off, it was still a little bit wet, and then I can go back in here and just blend with a just kind of damp brush in there. Um, same sort of thing here, I want to get Darker. This a bit darker in here. Since I got that wet paint on the canvas, I'm just taking my brush, which is a little bit wet, and just Pushing that paint around a little bit while it's before it's fully dry on the picture. Uh, let's do this. I think the same sort of thing inside here. So this is just kind of an orange. I'm just taking. Right now, what I have is basically a pretty dirty canvas, right? And I am making really good use of that dirty canvas because um, rather than trying to kind of mix all these colors I'm just using colors that look a little bit darker and applying those throughout the picture and doing them in very light little washes and so here's a bit of an orange kind of a peachy color putting that inside here. Darker color for here, right here. All sorts of little things going on here that I'm probably not going to get a full chance to get to because I'm going to try to wrap up pretty shortly. Um, but I think you're kind of seeing a little bit of, of how this works, which is the most important part of all of these lessons, right? It's just uh, understanding the method and then if you want to do more of it you're welcome to continue to explore any particular kind of um, I'm trying to show as many different kinds of styles and approaches to painting and by experimenting with different ones you kind of start to kind of find one that makes most sense for you um, purple here okay darker purple again I'm not even really cleaning my brush much at all at this point I like the, the colors are kind of just getting dirtier and, um, I find that helpful for getting the darker colors 
especially if I'm not using black. You know, like what I just did there is if you make a kind of a little bit of a, a so-called mistake, rather than trying to fix that orange, it's just like, okay, I'm going to change the shape of this orange a little bit, bend it in a bit to make it work. Let's go even darker here. a lot of detail in here that I'm not going to be able to get to, so I'm just fudging it a little bit. Uh, so I got this dark color. See if I can make this avocado work here by taking that same dark color. Get some paint on my brush. Some water on my brush, I mean. Let's see if I just Spread this out a little bit. there. I'm going to come back and just take a bit of that same color and put it into the bottom of this, whatever this thing was here. Um, this thing here I haven't done. I've been kind of focused on the bottom half of the picture. Um, I've got a bunch of things here to do. Okay. Well, I'm going to tackle that. I think we'll, we'll in another 15 minutes we'll be done here. A little bit longer than I was hoping. But that's what the painting is telling me. So I'm going to listen to the painting. same paint I've been using just to darken this Here. 
who knows how long she worked on this painting. I probably would imagine this would have been took, taken her the day to work on. So we're going a lot faster than that, trying to kind of get this, get this done. The other thing I like about using the same color and keeping the same kind of colors on my brush is I'm kind of moving those colors around and it just adds for a little bit more complexity, right? I'm using this a little bit of red and I'm putting a little bit of this red into the, the dark side of the shadows on the greens and... It's just, rather than just trying to do green shading on a green object, there's just little, there's just more complexity all over the place, which is just gonna make for ultimately a better, better picture. All right, same sort of thing. In fact, let's take a little bit of this red. So I've just got, so I'm taking some of this red here, mixing it up into some of these greens. What else is on my brush here? Uh, it's kind of a mishmash of things. Getting it quite wet. Then I can take that and brush it a little bit into the parrot. Into some of these darker areas. And it just gives it just extra little bits of, of life in here. Okay. Okay, so uh oh there's this here. Let's I got that to do. Be careful, I got paint on my fingers, so I just want to make sure I don't spread any paint accidentally like I made there before, so Right, so just a really a lot of water on my brush. Brushing into some of these darker areas. Um, and obviously I've done a little bit, <laughs> I'm not even really looking at what she did here to be honest. Just using the same sort of color, putting it into the beak. I'm going to work on the watermelon here for a couple minutes. Touch up some of the stuff there. Do the background. And then I think we'll be just about done. Um... Just noticing my horizon line is going to have to come down to somewhere down here. I'll have to make that. Well, maybe I'll just paint this in here. Um, you know, while I've got a little bit of this darker color, I'm going to put this in some of these areas inside the watermelon. Darken this up a bit. So I got a bunch of highlights. Let's do that. So this is just the kind of this bit of a mixture of the red that I've got going on in here. Adding a little bit of water just to uh, make it less opaque. 
It also kind of spreads a little bit easier. Another thing that's just in a little bit of my mind while I'm working on this is I think about how like fruits and vegetables have changed over the years. If you, if you do an int it's you can fall down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but if you look up on the web like you know what bananas used to look like three or four hundred years ago, they're very different than the way bananas look today. You know, or and I'm sure even this watermelon, like watermelon has changed watermelons used to have a lot of seeds in them and now we can buy seedless watermelons right so um, I just think it's interesting how you know the way that this watermelon looks right now people are like oh that looks like a very odd looking watermelon well this is probably the way watermelon looked like to her and to a lot of people around the world up until very recently Right, just as if we were to paint this watermelon as we see now, and then you were getting a time machine and go back and visit Frida Kahlo and show her your painting, she'd be like, oh, what happened to all the seeds in the watermelon? That's an odd-looking watermelon. Like, what do you mean? This is what watermelons look like. And then she would go and pull one out and open it up, and, and it would look, you're like, whoa, what happened to... It looks like it's full of, of seeds. How on earth do you... It's like, oh, I don't know. This is just the way we, our watermelons are. So anyway, just while I'm blabbing on here, and what I'm doing, I'm just using my brush that's got this, I mean, there's hardly any paint here. I'm just kind of, it's a lot of this is dried, so I'm just barely kind of pulling a little bit of that off with some water. And just going around and kind of brushing a little bit of that into some of these places is adding a little bit of shadow and a little bit of depth into here. And kind of just... Before, there, this was kind of lacking a lot of nuance, and it was there was a lot of white kind of just sloppily put there. Now I'm adding these little bit of darker areas and layers. All of a sudden, it just looks a lot more like there's it kind of goes up and down and moving around. It's got more shape to it. Um, let me see, can I put a little bit of this into here, just continue to darken this down. I know it's looking, it's a different, basically this is like a mandarin orange versus, I don't know what that was, a pomegranate or something at some point. Uh, so, um, let's put some more white on here and some green. Uh, or let's say, ah, I want to wrap up as soon as possible here. So I'm looking at this, this blue looks just too dark. So I think I'm going to use a little bit, let's just do an experiment. Let's take some of the cool blue and let's paint this right over top. Look at that. That's what we need. So this is cool because what we, the color that we wanted was the ultramarine blue, but it was just, it just um, was a little bit too dark. So now I'm putting some, the cool blue, or cerulean blue, which should go in the background anyway. I paint it over top, and it's sort of like both of those blues are mixing together and creating a blue that I'm much happier with. Go 
it down here to cover up a little bit of this table to make it look a little bit straighter. blue but I'm going through a lot of it so Ooh. maybe I'm putting too thick of a coat on there sometimes again it's this last little bit of a painting where I don't know about you but I start kind of rushing I can see the finish line and then that's when we have those little bloopers like right next to the finish line you start celebrating and then that's when you trip and fall and then you get shown endlessly on the news you know so <laughs> just just uh, i gotta keep that in mind as i'm getting close to the finish line is just not to get too sloppy and get ahead of myself touch up these edges a little bit of blue around the top here And so this last layer of blue comes, it, it, it uh, has the effect that's much closer to Frida's original painting, right? Right now, I feel like I'm starting to kind of move paint around here, like the, the paint that's sort of a little bit dry underneath is kind of getting a little bit angry with me for trying to paint over top of it. And it's creating these effects where the brush strokes are kind of starting to stick and mingle in ways I'm not happy with. So let's paint the bottom of the, um, of the, the, <laughs> watermelon okay so and I think there's other things I could sit and work on this painting for quite a while but I think we're gonna have to just call it a show here um, So I'm going to mix a cool green, just like we did with the parrot. So I've got my cool blue and cool yellow. I need a little bit more yellow here. I'm even going to add just a little bit of white into this mixture just to help uh, it to show through some of these darker colors. So 
this might be a little intense, but I kind of like it. Ooh, that might be too intense. You know what, I don't mind it. It's definitely way, way, way brighter than hers. Um, but that's okay. It doesn't, I'm not, uh, sometimes we can make changes. It's our painting. We can make, do whatever we want to it. You know, again, her, her watermelons look different than ours do today, so... Maybe they didn't have quite as bright of uh, a green exterior as, as ours do. So, our painting was made in 50 years or 70 years after she died. So, maybe I'm bringing it a little bit more into today's world. Okay, I'm going to paint a little bit of... You know, like, if if I do feel this is a little bit too dark, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. And maybe there's a few places where I can just kind of distribute that around. Just so it's not all one color anyway. Let's get everything a little bit darker. goes into the shadowy areas a little bit of darker side is welcome anyway oh that's good I like that mm hmm yum 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 okay just before I wash my brush anything I want to do with this particular color. I could do some detail. Like she's got this kind of um, spotting on the on the parrot, but that could be a bit of I, I could end up spending 20 minutes doing that. So I think I'm going to lay off on that. I could put green down here, but I think I'm going to lay off on that. Um, there is these little dots on here. Maybe I'll put just a few little spots. Get my brush a little bit. To do some of those dots, I think what I'm going to do is get paint on the back side of my brush. And let's see if I can get... And you could use the same sort of technique for doing the the bird as well. Let's say you wanted to take a little bit of... Um, let's do a tiny little bit of it, you know, while we're right here. So I'm just going to transition to a little... Since we're running... If you're still watching at this point, then, then you know, I... Let's just... So what I did is just got a little bit of this white. I take... Um, I'm making kind of like a a yellow with a bit of white in there. Taking the back side of my brush. I've got to be careful because that's kind of built up quite a lot. Let's see, maybe I can do it with the tip of my brush. Let's just do a few little spots here. Let's 
see, once you start, you're kind of committing to it. Um, so. Ah. I tend to try to avoid doing last minute changes like this, but. Anyway. There's a little bit. I think what I want to do just before I totally move on from that is I'm just going to do a few more spots in a slightly different color. side of my brush for some of this I think again I could just keep on going over and over and over oh I want to do a little bit of white on this watermelon so I'm gonna do that and then I think we'll be done because this this episode is going a little bit long bit of white. Um, I'm going to take uh, a little bit of the red, so it's not pure, pure white, because otherwise it might be just a little bit too strong. Um, and take this, and let's carry this white across. does have these little kind of tentacles that are kind of veins or whatever coming into there so I'll just do a little bit of that just taking my brush and moving a few little pieces out maybe even a tad bit of water will kind of make it a little bit easier to apply that and also make them a little bit less visible. just want to fudge this a little bit here because it just looked like a bit of white slapped right on the surface so let's just integrate that a little bit more and then I think we'll be done still so much I want to do but I think I think um, you know I feel like that did a pretty good job as my grandfather used to say good enough for government work right <laughs> um, okay so we'll sign this
pencil out. And of course, everything's still dry on this side, so I'm going to be kind of careful about where and how I hold this. Hmm, I got a little bit of fingerprints on the bottom down here. You know what, I am going to just do a quick little touch up on that because I was a little upset with the way I got fingerprints earlier. So let's take a bit of... It never ends, does it? And it just, just never... Oh, do I have a little bit more? drive me nuts unless I do it, fix it properly. Sometimes these are the things that when you've got a painting and it's sitting on your wall and you're just looking at it and that's just all you do is you just sit there and you look at the same problem over and over and over again. So this way I won't have to look at this part of the painting over and over again. <laughs> and I can live with that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, another one done. Um, sure, there's more we could do here to kind of bring it closer to hers. I've changed the parrot around just because I was getting a little bit sloppy and hurrying for time. But overall, I feel pretty good about it. Like, I feel like everything is kind of there. Uh, I'm missing a little bit of the textures that she had, but for two and a half hours of painting, I feel like that's we've done a good enough job. Um, okay, so I'm going to call it a show here, and I would love to see the paintings that you guys make. Again, I want to do a show in a few episodes from now where we'll kind of show all of the paintings that you guys have made so far. So if you made some paintings and you're kind of you're you're a little bit behind and you're catching up it gives you an opportunity to make some of those paintings send them in we'll include them with all the other ones that people have already sent which are so amazing i got some paintings uh four or five that people sent of the one Miro painting we did last week and they're really fantastic uh, i'm really excited about those and again i would love to see this one so send it to me on your social media uh, via twitter instagram facebook and um if you want to support the channel, you can like and subscribe to it. Hit the notification bell. There's links to the PayPal below as well. And I've always forget to mention it, but there is the super chat. There's a little where you type in a comment right below there. There's a little dollar sign if you wanted to submit money through there as well. Um, another little kind of quick thing is that if you want to support independent um, producers here on YouTube is rather than skipping the ads before and after videos just let them play you know while you're washing dishes just let it play get up fold a couple clothes and that helps the little ad revenue goes uh, towards creators like me so if you don't want to or you don't have money to contribute just a couple extra little seconds of your time is one way that you can help us out thank you everybody for tuning in watching another episode 
and for painting along. Those of you that painted, again, I would love to see what you made. Otherwise, we'll see you on Thursday. We're going to paint a painting by Charles Birchfield, and it's going to be our little bit of a Halloween painting. And I think that one's going to be a lot of fun, too. It's a landscape painting with a bit of a twist to it. And not too creepy that it's not something you want, you don't want to hang in your house. Okay, so we'll talk all about that next class. You guys have a wonderful rest of your evening, morning, noon, wherever you are on planet Earth. Thanks for tuning in and joining me here in my studio. We'll see you next class. Bye-bye.